Hello and welcome back to your creativity workouts for art and for life. In today's video I'm going to take this somewhat failed painting and show you how I create a plexiglass template and use that template to cut these pieces out of the painting and then how I arrange those paintings into a polyptych and I will show you once I have the pieces arranged how they follow some basic rules of composition so that when you're creating your own collages and your own polyptics you can figure out how to arrange the pieces following some basic composition rules. Please enjoy the video and if you do like and subscribe. Thanks very much. Step one of the process is to cut out my transparent template and what I am using here is just some plexiglass that I purchased at my local big box store and I am scoring the plexiglass using a box cutter knife. I'm not using an X-Acto knife because those blades are a little bit small and flimsy. This is a box cutter knife with a razor blade and what I'm doing is scoring it over and over and over again slowly not with too much pressure but just so that I get a deep enough groove that it's going to snap as you noticed at the beginning of the video my groove was not quite deep enough so I am just scoring and scoring and scoring it and I'll just keep trying until it finally works and then I'm just placing this thing on the edge of my table and giving it a good whack. And there it goes. Onto the floor. And here we have my clear plexiglass template. Okay. So, and what is this? It is a piece of I'm not sure what. I actually started out by trying to create something with some super bright colors. I didn't really like what was going on, so I actually used it as a scrap of paper. And the black shapes you see are actually the outlines from other pieces of paper that I had placed on top of this to paint over. And so now what I'm doing is placing my plexiglass all over the place to see where there might be some interesting compositions. And then I am cutting them out with an X-Acto knife. And it's amazing, that looks kind of cool, even though the overall large picture is not so nice. The little compositions can actually be kind of cool. And I am using my L-shaped croppers here around the plexiglass, because when you get the wide white border around your composition, you're better able to hone in on what it actually is. And then I can just move this around all over the place, figure out what I want my composition to be, and once I get it there, I can just remove my wide white cropping borders, and then I can cut things out with the X-Acto knife. And it works pretty well. And I'm just going to continue doing this to see what I can figure out. I'm looking for compositions that appeal to my eye. They probably can form to some general compositions. This one, for instance, is what I call the L shape. It has a line going down the bottom and then sort of up the other side. And here I'm just looking to see if I like some colors and things like that. There's a bit of an angle there. Well, we decided not to go for that one. So I won't make any comments until I decide on the next one. <laughs> and you're probably going to look through this, like I say this in all my videos, you're probably going to look through this and say, oh my gosh, why didn't you pick that one? I probably could pick dozens more compositions than I actually end up with. Sometimes they just say, oh, well, that's nice, but maybe I'll find something better. And I just keep going on. I could spend a lot more time than is necessary on this. And it's actually kind of fun. It's also a good exercise for your brain, getting used to seeing what is a good composition. Because then, when you're making a larger piece, 
there's going to be something there in the back of your mind that says, oh, that's a composition I liked in the past. So it's a way of training your eye. Okay, here we go. Here's another one coming up. And once I cut all of these out, I think I cut six of them out, I have this piece of leftover paper, and it's still hanging around. I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. I will probably use bits and pieces of it for more collages. It might make a good collage of some sort. I'm not sure what. I tend not to throw out my scraps. I just keep them around forever and a while. Although I do end up with super large piles of junk and every so often I will go through them. I will toss them out and I will rediscover others and those work well in collages as well. So that's another fun activity you can do. Just go through all your scraps. And you never know what you'll be inspired to create. Didn't like any of those. There's one I should have cut out. Okay, well, I didn't, so that's life. Oh, I should have cut that out. I really should have cut that out, but I did not, so that's life. I know I keep saying that. Turn it upside down and get a different view of things and see if maybe that gives me some inspiration. That's another thing when it comes to making art. You don't have to have an idea in your head ahead of time and then go and create it. You can discover your ideas as you go along. At least that's the way I work a lot of the time. I just consider art making a journey of discovery. And I like that one because I like the little pink contrasting with the yellow on the other side. And we'll try for more. I just keep seeing more that I should have stopped and cut out, but I did not. Oh well. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. It just is what it is. So what am I going to do with all these little things? Well. I could put them together as a single piece. I could create small individual pieces. I could put them on some folding paper for greeting cards. I could use them as bookmarks. I could just let them hang around and look pretty. I could frame them up individually and place them next to each other. I could put them all inside a single frame. There are many things you can do with these. I could put them on the cover of a sketchbook. I could put them on the inside pages of a sketchbook so that I can peruse them every so often. I could turn them into my wallpaper on my phone. So many different things you can do with your artwork of all different sizes. And I had one art teacher say to me recently because I said, oh, I just want to start painting big. I just need to paint these larger pieces that everybody shows in all the galleries and the museums. And she's like, no, nah, that's old fashioned. You don't have to paint big anymore. You can paint whatever size you want to. So in this case, 
miniature it is. As a matter of fact, if you're an artist and you're trying to sell your work and you're painting super gigantic works, it's not going to fit in your average person's space. So unless you're only trying to sell to people who have huge homes with giant walls, you might not want to paint big. Everybody's got a little bit of space here and there where they can paint, place a nice piece of artwork, including us artists. And besides, we probably got too much, so we can't put it everywhere. So here's the final composition, and I've decided to place these five side by side into a single piece. And I'll sort of give you a little bit of illustration of how this thing works together as a cohesive whole based on composition techniques. First of all, you'll notice that there is blue in every single one of the panels and that kind of holds things together. Second, there is white in every single one of the panels that also holds things together. The third thing is that you see yellow in the first panel in the upper left and yellow in the fourth panel in the bottom right. And when your eye moves from one to the other, it sort of moves in a diagonal, which creates movement through the piece. More movement is also generated with the black lines. If you look in the second panel, you'll see that the black line moves from the bottom left up to the top right. And any diagonal in a 2D piece of art actually symbolizes movement. So we're moving from the bottom left up to the top right and then it continues to move across the piece and then down towards the bottom so that's almost creating a circular movement and the last thing I'm going to point out is that little piece of pink over in the bottom left that kind of attracts your eye and your eye is attracted over there and then it continues to move through the piece so it kind of goes over and over and over again and creates movement and creates cohesion. So that's basically the way the composition was created here. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please like and subscribe.